Today, there are people all over the world, sitting around and worrying about a lot of things. Will the economy rebound? Am I going to be able to continue to work? When will all this end? When will things get back to normal? 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. It's easy to read that scripture and think to yourself, okay, Lord, get busy. But we need to remember that God's time is not our time. We have to stand on the fact that God's plans are for our good. If we stand on the promises of God, we will no longer respond in fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is a tool the devil uses to confuse and control us. Fear and worries are a barrier to us receiving the gift of hope. The thing is, we already have the answers to our worries. God is looking for Christian men and women all over the world to humble themselves and to place their faith in Him. He wants us to earnestly seek His face, not just pray by rote, but to truly seek His favor and repent of our transgressions. We need to come together praying and seeking God, knowing that only He has the power to forgive us and heal our land. And I'm not talking about just the country that you live in, but the entire planet. Christianity has spread across the world. So if we all seek Him and earnestly pray that He forgives us and heal the land, it will be done. His own words are a promise of His willingness to forgive and heal the land. God doesn't care about maps or borders. If we Christians all across the world, if we all begin to stand on this promise that He has given us, if we do as He asks, He said He would forgive us and heal the land. The thing we need to remember is, this promise the Father gave us is a conditional promise. To get God to fulfill His promise, we must meet the conditions He requires. Right now today, we Christians have the ability to get God to heal the entire planet. I noticed the scripture didn't say how many of God's people were to do this. But it's obvious that the more of us that stand on this promise, the better it would be. So if you are one of God's people, then this scripture pertains to you. I hear people everywhere saying that they want things to change and for the world to be made better. If you want change, then be the change. Meet God's requirements and pray about it and continue to pray daily until He answers, because we do not know how many of His people He requires for Him to act on His promise. It may be two, or ten, or maybe thousands, but if we stand on His promise, and if we earnestly pray about it daily, then one day, we don't know when, but one day one of our prayers will be the one that is enough to meet the requirement. Every story in the Bible, in each one we find a common denominator. It's to have faith and to believe. From the Old Testament, and throughout the new, all of them remind us to have faith and to believe. Forget about what the news media is reporting. Forget about what the popular opinions are on the internet. Focus and call on the only opinion that really matters. God's opinion. The news media won't tell you what I'm about to tell you. The problems and chaos that the world is facing. It's a spiritual fight from the pit of hell with the main focus being stealing, killing, and destroying all of humanity not just one country or another country. The enemy is focused on it all. So we better get it together and stand together in unity before it is too late. I hear so many say we want to just get back to normal. Is normal what we really want and are willing to settle for? Normal is mediocre. There is nowhere in the scripture where you will find it referring to God's blessings as normal or mediocre. Life shouldn't feel like an old pair of comfortable slippers. Jesus was beaten, crucified, and rose victorious over death, so we could live blessed and abundant lives. Not to settle for normal or mediocrity. Normal has been a way of life for far too long. See what it got us. Now normal is no longer normal. The entire world is in chaos. If you're a Christian, God has called you to be a steward of the world. He has told us exactly what we must do to stop the insanity and to save it. This chaos has come along and caught the majority of the church asleep at the wheel. God has already given and equipped every Christian with a measure of faith, which is his spiritual weapon of mass destruction against the enemy. Our belief in faith alongside God and his army of angels can halt all of this. For us to have the faith of a mustard seed, to be able to say to a mountain move, and expect through our faith and in God's ability, the mountain must obey. This was not some exaggeration written in the Bible, as some would have you to believe. 
If you believe and have faith in God, He will move mountains through us. The church must stop being reactive and always playing defense to the devil's attacks. We shouldn't fear anything Satan and his minions are capable of. Jesus has already claimed victory, not for the chance of victory. The thing is the devil fights with every lie he can think of because he already knows he's been beat. The church, sadly, has forgotten that and has fought for far too long like there's no chance of victory. There is no fear for those who are in Christ Jesus. Our names should be synonymous with God's name as far as the devil is concerned. Our name, because it's backed up by and associated with God's name, should send shockwaves through the enemy's camp and send thousands on the run. Let me say this again in case you've already forgotten. Never ever forget. We fight from Jesus' already accomplished victory, not for the chance of victory. It's time we Christians get involved in what's going on. It's time we got back to the basics of faith that caused every one of us to step out and trust our hearts to the salvation of Jesus in the first place. It's time we fell in love again with the things of God. Let me say it once again. It's time we fell in love again with the will, the promises, the plans, and all the things of God. The time has come, and we who believe have been called to the battlefield. This is a worldwide faith challenge. And if we weren't witnessing this attack from the devil on the scale we are seeing unfold before our very eyes, we would never believe what is happening. There has never been a greater time than right now to get involved, call on the name of the Lord, stand up and stand in faith together against the attack on humanity. There are only two sides to choose from, good and evil. It is really just that simple. While the devil and those who are against God's plans would like for you to think there is a gray area concerning good and evil, there is no gray area. There is no sugarcoating anything when it comes to the devil's agenda and spiritual matters. The battle is here. It has always been here and will always be here, but it has almost reached the critical point. We had better get it together, and I mean now. Jesus has overcome the world when he was crucified. And through Jesus and what he accomplished on the cross for us, we also became overcomers when we were saved through him and became a child of God. When we are willing to take scripture at face value and have faith in God's promises, it's no longer what can we do. It's what can't we do. With our faith called to action and believing in God, he makes a way for us. We're not alone in this battle. In fact, all of the recipients of the miracles we read about in the Bible face the exact same dilemma we're facing. Their needs were all bigger than their abilities. They all needed God to step into their situation and come through for them, didn't they? By faith, we must follow his instructions, just as all of the Bible heroes chose to do and wait for his instructions and deliverance. If we'd only end up settling for less than we deserve, called mediocrity. Mediocrity is easy. Normal is easy. Resting in the easiness of God's instruction is not easy if you listen to the fear-mongering of the devil and the world. Today we have hope because of God's gift of grace. God is our hope in healing, safety, and protection from all things, seen or not seen. This week, why not go out of your way to be kind to others and help renew humanity's hope and show the world God's love through your actions? Plant seeds of hope in a world full of despair. Raise your expectations and let's call on God for him to heal humanity in our land. Brothers and sisters, you are to my prayers and I ask that you keep me in yours. I hope to see you on the battlefield. Have a blessed day.